4th of July, 1982. <laughs> space Shuttle Columbia glides to Earth from its fourth successful flight into space. While the whole world watched Columbia, a certain select group of Americans had special feelings of elation and pride. The space shuttle is theirs, created with their brains and their hands, a special part of their lives. They are the people who build these great white stars and who send them in and out of the heavens with such precision. These people are among the only ones in the history of man who have the skill and the privilege to build a star. How does it feel to be a part of history? We really want to thank you, the people that put it together, that designed it. Thank you. No, I want to say seriously, I'm a little in awe being in this place and knowing all that has been produced here and thinking back over the years as we waited and watched, as you have waited and watched for the results, and for that first step on the moon, you left your fingerprints on that, and then a gentleman left his footprints on the moon because of you. How does it feel to have a part in the building of America's space shuttle? I feel that I'm, I'm proud, just like Apollo. I'm proud to be part of it. We are so privileged to work on this program. Best fine machine is. Best fine machine. It makes us proud to just be a part of the team and to know that we're the few in the country that can do this kind of a job. That's true. Just oh, I think it's very exciting to be involved with a company that is doing something like this. Yeah, hey, I feel, uh, feel uh, very privileged. You know, uh, everybody doesn't have a chance to work on a shuttle. A lot of my friends when my wife or I will tell them that I work on the space shuttle, they seem to be pretty impressed. And it makes me feel good. I'm pretty impressed with the job, too. Ten years before, NASA awarded the contract to build the world's first reusable spacecraft. These people have done everything they said they would do, and more. Rockwell International was assigned the responsibility to design and build the shuttle orbiter vehicles and to assist in integration of the entire space shuttle system of orbiter, main rocket engines, solid rocket boosters, and external propellant tank. It takes all kinds of disciplines and skills to build a spacecraft like the shuttle. And it takes much more the steadfast commitment of a company and its employees, and their patience, energy, courage, and dedication. Management of shuttle orbiter design and construction, and integration of the entire system, involves administering the efforts of thousands of people and hundreds of companies throughout the United States. To make certain that the millions of parts and systems will come together perfectly. At 
the right place at the right time. This is shuttle launch control, the T minus one hour, 18 minutes and counting. The hatch on the orbiter Columbia is presently being closed. In 10 short years, the NASA industry team designed, built, and qualified the spacecraft Columbia, the first reusable spacecraft. A spacecraft the like of which had never been built before. On April 12, 1981, the Space Shuttle Columbia was launched on its first flight in space. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. many firsts associated with the space shuttle. One of the most significant is its ability to return from Earth orbit and fly to a controlled landing on a runway on Earth. You're coming. Go down. Put your feet. 30, 30, 20, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1, touchdown. From the moment the spacecraft stops rolling, the turnaround crews are in action. Their job, prepare the spacecraft for another flight in space. We meet the vehicle when it lands, we safe it, uh, and then bring it back into the mate demate facility that you see over here. Uh, and then we process it then for a ferry back to the Kennedy Space Center. By November 1981, Columbia was ready for another first, the return into space. Minus 10, 9, we have go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Minus 3, 2, 1, we have ignition. We have ignition of the solid rocket boosters and liftoff. Liftoff of America's space shuttle, and the space shuttle has cleared the tower. Houston now controlling, the mission control confirms roll maneuver started. During the flight, one of three fuel cells was shut down due to overheating. The second flight was shortened, but the spacecraft's overall performance was again near perfect. Once again, 
the complex and critical turnaround process was completed and Columbia made ready for its third flight. The third flight gave a dramatic demonstration of the capability and flexibility of the space shuttle system. When heavy rains made the landing area at Edwards Air Force Base questionable, the landing site was changed to White Sands, New Mexico. The flight was lengthened until weather conditions improved at this alternate landing site. Then, once again, this reusable aircraft spacecraft glided down to a smooth landing on the Earth. By the spring of 1982, the spacecraft Columbia had soared into space three times and performed beyond expectations. The turnaround operations had been substantially enhanced by the Rockwell team, and the time shortened considerably. June 27, 1982. The Space Shuttle Columbia was launched on its fourth Minus journey 10, into space. Nine, eight, seven. We have main engine ignition. Four, three, two, one. And we have solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of America's Space Shuttle on its fourth mission, and we have cleared the tower. Houston now controlling. Mission control confirmed. Roll maneuver started. 20 seconds, rough looks good. June 30th, 1982. While Columbia orbited the Earth, the first operational space shuttle orbiter, Challenger, was rolled out on time, meeting a schedule that had been set some two and one half years before. worked on Challenger and take pride in the fact that you've played a key and important role in the evolution of our country's space program and capability. The space shuttle will provide a quantum leap beyond expendable launch vehicles. With its 65,000 pound payload capacity, the system gives access to and from space for men and equipment a relatively unlimited payload capability through multiple missions, and an unmatched versatility of operations in orbit. The 4th of July, 1982. The fourth landing of the Columbia is the historical equivalent to the driving of the Golden Spike, which completed the first transcontinental railroad. It marks our entrance into a new era. The test flights are over. The groundwork has been laid. And now we will move forward to capitalize on the tremendous potential offered by the ultimate frontier of space. Beginning with the next flight, the Columbia and her sister ships will be fully operational, ready to provide economical and routine access to space for scientific exploration, commercial ventures, and for tasks related to the national security.
July 4th, 1982, the same day as the STS-4 landing, the first of Columbia's sister ships, Challenger, departed from Edwards Air Force Base for delivery to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. While the whole world watched Columbia, a select group of Americans experienced special feelings of elation and pride. These are the people on the NASA and industry teams who are among the very first to build a star.